The Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing. In one of the greatest unsolved aviation mysteries of our time, Malaysia flight MH370 vanished into thin air, leaving the world in shock and disbelief. For years, investigators have combed the depths of the ocean and scrutinized every piece of evidence, desperate to uncover the truth behind the enigmatic disappearance. But what if the answers we seek lie hidden in a myriad of new findings and cutting-edge theories? Today, we embark on a riveting journey, unveiling some groundbreaking discoveries and mind-bending theories that might shed light on the dark secrets of the Malaysia flight MH370 tragedy. The unfortunate flight, often known as MH370, was a planned international passenger flight operated by Malaysian Airlines. Its destination was the bustling city of Beijing, the capital of China with over 200 passengers on board, ready to either embrace their familiar homeland or embark on the exciting exploration of a foreign land. Specifically, there were 227 passengers from 14 different countries and 12 Malaysian crew members, a diverse group of people traveling across vast oceans and lands on March 8, 2014. MH370 took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport, situated in Malaysia's busy capital city at the stroke of midnight. It was a routine flight, anticipated to cover a journey of approximately 5,570 kilometers over about 5 hours and 34 minutes to Beijing. This journey unexpectedly captured the world's attention. Pilots Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah and First Officer Fariq Abdul Hamid piloted the advanced Boeing 777-200ER aircraft, known for its safety and advanced technology, favored by many airlines for long-haul flights. Everything seemed normal as MH370 ascended into the night sky, with passengers settling in. However, it vanished from radar screens during its scheduled journey from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March 8, 2014, leaving a baffling mystery. Inside the cockpit, Captain Zahari and First Officer Farik were experienced professionals responsible for their passengers' safety. It was approximately 101 Malaysian Standard Time when the aircraft, flying at an altitude of 35,000 feet, transmitted its regular half-hourly data report through the aircraft communications addressing and reporting system. Everything appeared routine in the report, with no signs of trouble on board. At around 1.07 a.m., the ACARS transmitted its final message, indicating that all systems were operating normally. The next update was expected at 1.37 a.m., but sadly, it never came. The most chilling moment happened around 1.19 a.m., when the aircraft was about to enter Vietnamese airspace. The cockpit communicated with the air traffic controller in Kuala Lumpur, saying, Good night, Malaysia 370. This phrase was routine, signaling the handover from one control center to another. But this time, the expected communication from the new center never arrived. Lately, scientists have made some really shocking new discoveries and theories about the unfortunate Flight 370 incident. These findings are about to change our understanding of the disaster in a big way, providing deep insights into what happened. Number 15. Cryptic Calls and Signals In the intriguing case of MH370, after the plane vanished from radar, it astonishingly managed to intermittently communicate with a stationary satellite located in the Indian Ocean for a continuous six-hour period. This satellite belonged to a company called Inmarsat, based in London, this intriguing communication indicates that the plane didn't face a sudden catastrophic event. Instead, it seems to have continued flying at a high speed and altitude during those six hours. This was possible because certain communication systems on board like passenger equipment, cockpit technology, and automated maintenance reports had been deliberately switched off or disconnected. The interaction with the Inmarsat satellite was like faint whispers of communication consisting of brief electronic signals. In total, there were seven instances of connection. Two were automatically initiated by the plane, and five were initiated by the Inmarsat ground station. Additionally, two satellite phone calls were made, but unfortunately, there was no response on the other end. However, these calls provided more details about the situation. Most of these communications were linked to the two values that HEMA 
presumably a person or system, had recently started recording. Number 14. Radar Information Radar information from air traffic control computers, along with secret details from the Malaysian Air Force, revealed that after MH370 disappeared from the radar, it made a sudden turn to the southwest. Then, it changed its course back over the Malay Peninsula and circled around Penang Island. From there, the plane flew northwest, passing over the Malacca Strait and eventually disappearing from radar coverage over the Andaman Sea. This portion of the flight lasted for more than an hour, suggesting that this incident was different from a usual hijacking or any previously seen accidents or pilot suicide scenarios. The investigation into MH370 took the authorities in unexpected and unfamiliar directions right from the start. The mystery surrounding MH370 has been under investigation for a long time, and people all around the world have been guessing intensely. Families worldwide were deeply affected by the loss. The notion that a highly advanced aircraft with modern instruments and backup communications could simply vanish appears improbable. Deleting an email permanently is tough, and completely disconnecting from the modern world is nearly impractical, even if someone intentionally attempts to do so. A Boeing 777 is designed to have continuous electronic connectivity, so the aeroplane's disappearance has led to various ideas. Some of these notions are outlandish, but they gain attention because it's uncommon for commercial planes to vanish in today's times. In spite of prompt denials by Malaysian officials and efforts by the Malaysian Air Force to create confusion, the truth about the plane's peculiar flight path started emerging rapidly. Number 13. The Astonishing Journey Towards Antarctica In a remarkable turn of events, technicians in London used Doppler shift logs to discover something unprecedented, the exact location of an aeroplane. It was in Mars set that this groundbreaking feat took place, specifically at 2.40 a.m. The aeroplane, previously thought to be on a straight path, surprised everyone by making a significant turn southwards. This pivotal moment happened above Sumatra, the northernmost island of Indonesia. Despite some uncertainty in the analysis, experts believe that the aeroplane continued its journey in the direction of Antarctica, a considerable distance beyond its expected range. Six hours later, the Doppler data unveiled a sudden and steep descent. The descent was astonishingly rapid, up to five times faster than the usual rate. Within a minute or two of crossing the seventh arc, the plane tragically plunged into the ocean. This rapid descent possibly caused the aeroplane to lose parts before the impact. Electronic evidence indicates that this was not a planned water landing, but a catastrophic event. The airplane seemed to have shattered into numerous pieces almost instantaneously. Yet, at this juncture, the exact location and cause of the impact remained unknown. The satellite interpretations lacked solid physical evidence to support them, leaving the mystery unsolved. Number 12. The Doppler Value The technical data analysis suggests that the plane likely turned southward. This conclusion is strongly supported by the second recorded value from Inmarsat, which we'll call the Doppler value. This value is vital because it measures how the plane's frequency changes as it moves quickly relative to the satellite's position. It's a regular way for aeroplanes to communicate with satellites during flights. To ensure smooth communication, the aeroplane systems anticipate and adjust for these frequency changes. However, the adjustments may not be entirely accurate because older satellites might not always send signals precisely as expected by the planes. Other factors like the satellite's orbit tilt and temperature can also influence the signals they transmit, which can leave noticeable marks on the data. Number 11. The Elusive Black Boxes Hunt The information from satellites indicated something remarkable. The plane had likely continued flying for several hours, even after it had gone silent. Eventually, Malaysian officials admitted that this report was indeed accurate. Malaysia's government was known for its secretive and untrustworthy behavior during the investigation of the missing plane. This raised suspicions, especially given the accusations of corruption surrounding the government in the region. The situation became chaotic for accident investigators from Europe, Australia, and the United States. They faced obstacles due to withheld information and initial misguided search efforts in the South China Sea. This led to the unfortunate result of not finding any floating debris. Had the Malaysians been transparent from the start, 
the discovery of debris could have helped pinpoint the plane's general location, potentially leading to the recovery of its black boxes. The search for these black boxes eventually led to a distant part of the ocean, but the ocean itself is vast. Locating similar black boxes from a previous crash, Air France Flight 447 took two years. Despite having a good idea of where to look, it still took nearly two months of unsuccessful efforts before the search shifted to the deeper sections of the ocean. The surface search concluded in April 2014, officially under Malaysian jurisdiction. However, their capabilities were limited for a deep sea search and recovery operation. Thankfully, Australia, being a responsible global actor, stepped in. They took the lead in the search areas identified by satellite data. The region's extreme depth and unexplored nature presented a unique challenge. Mapping the underwater terrain accurately was the first step. Only then could specialized sonar vehicles be safely towed many miles beneath the ocean's surface. Number 10. The Intentional Flight's Secrets Another interesting detail suggests that this event might not have been a simple accident, but a carefully planned situation. The unusual path the flight took without any electronic communication is not easily explained by common reasons like technical problems or human mistakes. Regular explanations, which include things like computer errors, problems with control systems, environmental issues like ice, lightning, or bird strikes, and even very rare events like meteorites or volcanic ash, struggle to make sense of the flight's complex route. Surprisingly, the various possible mechanical and human-related issues, from sensors to radio equipment, and from instruments to electrical systems, don't fully explain the intentional nature of the flight's deviation from its course. Even scenarios involving things like fire, smoke, sudden loss of cabin pressure, explosions in the cargo area, or the pilot being unable to fly the plane, don't reveal the full story behind this puzzling event. The fact that there are no previous incidents of confused pilots, medical emergencies, or external threats like bombs or acts of war makes the mystery even more intriguing. Number 9. Cruising to Conspiracy In Boulder, Colorado, Mike, an electrical engineer and an esteemed member of an independent group, devotedly delved into radar data concerning an aeroplane. He formed a firm belief that during a turn, the aircraft ascended to a height of 40,000 feet, which was close to its maximum capacity. Such a maneuver would have subjected the passengers to strong G-forces, pushing them back into their seats. Mike proposed a theory that this climb was deliberate and intended to rapidly depressurize the plane, leading to the swift incapacitation and unfortunate demise of everyone on board. His hypothesis suggested that this intentional depressurization might have been a method to control any potential unruly behavior during the lengthy flight. The depressurization's effects would have gone unnoticed in the cabin if it weren't for the sudden appearance of drop-down oxygen masks designed for emergency situations. However, these masks were only effective for up to 15 minutes at altitudes below 13,000 feet. At the high cruising altitude of 40,000 feet, the occupants in the cabin would have swiftly lost consciousness, experiencing no choking or gasping for air. The deceased passengers would have remained in their seats, their faces cradled by the now ineffective oxygen masks hanging from the ceiling. The scene would have been dimly lit by emergency lights. In contrast, the cockpit was equipped with four pressurized oxygen masks, capable of supplying oxygen for several hours. If someone intentionally depressurized the plane, they could have easily used one of these masks to continue breathing safely. As the plane rapidly zoomed, it appeared as a mysterious dot on the main radars, hurtling toward Penang Island at nearly 600 miles per hour. The vicinity housed Butterworth Air Base, which boasted a fleet of Malaysian F-18 fighter jets and an air defense radar. Surprisingly, it seemed that no one was paying much attention to the situation. As Mike continued to investigate, he couldn't help but wonder about the puzzling lack of attention from the air defense radar and fighter jets. The gravity of his findings and the potential implications for aviation safety weighed heavily on his mind. Number 8. Sabotage in the Clouds Despite what many people thought, 
The plane's control was not taken from a distant location below the front galley where electrical equipment is stored. Instead, it was controlled from inside the cockpit. This happened between 1.01 a.m. when the plane reached an altitude of 35,000 feet and 1.21 a.m. when it disappeared from the secondary radar. During this 20-minute period, the plane's automatic condition reporting system sent its regular 30-minute update to the airline's maintenance department through a satellite. This update included information about the fuel level, altitude, speed, geographic position, and any anomalies. The transmission showed that the aeroplane's satellite communication system was working at that time. Considering how unlikely it is for two pilots to act together in such a way, it is probable that by the time the plane disappeared from the secondary radar, one of the pilots was either unable to function, had passed away, or had been locked out of the cockpit. Both military and civilian aircraft were detected on the primary radar. Further investigation indicated that the pilot of MH370 probably disabled the autopilot, as the tight turn to the southwest was too precise to be performed by automated systems. Additionally, it appears that the person in control intentionally depressurized the plane and turned off a significant portion, if not all, of the electrical system around the same time. The reason behind these actions remains unclear, but they had the unintended consequence of temporarily disrupting the satellite link. Number 7. When Pilots Take Matters Into Their Own Hands In the intriguing mystery of the MH370's disappearance, another theory revolves around the captain's possible involvement. Was it conceivable that the captain assumed control without resorting to force? Though unsettling, this notion isn't entirely unprecedented, as similar incidents have occurred in the past. For instance, in 1997, the captain of Silk Air, a Singaporean airline, allegedly deactivated crucial recorders on a Boeing 737 before deliberately crashing it into a river at high speeds. Similarly, in 1999, the co-pilot of Egypt's Air Flight 990 intentionally crashed the plane into the sea near Long Island, claiming the lives of all on board. Moreover, just a month before the MH370 incident, the captain of Mozambique Airlines Flight 70 tragically crashed his plane from a high altitude, causing the loss of everyone aboard. Another haunting example is the German Wings Airbus, which deliberately crashed into the French Alps on March 24, 2015, resulting in the loss of all passengers and crew. In this case, the co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, locked the pilot out of the cockpit while he went to the bathroom. Investigation revealed that Lubitz had been experiencing sadness and had previously researched the MH370's disappearance a year earlier. However, it is challenging to accept the possibility of the co-pilot's involvement in the MH370 incident. He was described as a young, optimistic individual, eagerly anticipating his upcoming marriage. No records suggest any personal conflicts or doubts about his descent into depression. Additionally, he was not a German pilot working for a struggling, low-cost airline with meager pay and little prestige. On the contrary, he was flying the Grand Boeing 777 in a country where the national airline and its pilots were held in high esteem. Number 6. Unmasking Captain Zahari Amidst growing concerns, a spotlight has been cast on Captain Zahari, a figure depicted in official accounts as an exemplary pilot and a composed family man who took pleasure in engaging with flight simulators. While his family projects this image, Glaring signals of distress have been seemingly brushed aside. Law enforcement uncovered aspects of Zahari's life that warranted a more thorough examination, yet the subsequent findings proved insufficient. The assessment of Zahari's ability to manage work-related pressure yielded a positive rating, and there was no prior evidence of indifference, unease, or edginess. His routine, interpersonal connections, and familial challenges exhibited no noteworthy alterations. No behavioral cues indicated any retreat from social interactions, shifts in routines, or modifications in interests. A review of his demeanor on the day of the flight, along with the three flights preceding it, captured by airport CCTV recordings, depicted Zahari as unwavering, well-groomed, and impeccably attired. His customary traits, encompassing his stance, facial expressions, and gestures, remained unaltered. 
Nevertheless, the official report appears to be either disconnected or conflicting with what was known about Zahari, given the disconcerting hints that were disregarded. His existence was shrouded in desolation and solitude. The departure of his wife plunged him into a state of isolation, with prolonged hours spent in solitude as he eagerly awaited the intervals between flights to elapse. He nurtured affection for a married woman with a family, and his fixation extended to two young online models he encountered on social media. His efforts to establish a connection with them went unanswered, and a few of his remarks ventured into inappropriate territory. Zahari's life underwent a profound transformation, distancing him from the once steady and secure existence he had known. His excessive indulgence in social media might have exacerbated his seclusion, with experts positing a diagnosis of clinical depression. A noteworthy discovery emerged from an examination of his flight simulator, with the FBI identifying a flight trajectory bearing resemblance to that of MH370. Curiously, Malaysian investigators accorded this piece of evidence minimal significance, despite its potential implications. In light of these intricate details, a broader understanding of Captain Zahari's circumstances begins to emerge, suggesting a multifaceted struggle that extends beyond the veneer of his public portrayal. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. In a fascinating twist on the mystery of the missing Flight 370, there's another theory that challenges the belief that the plane crashed and disappeared in the Indian Ocean. According to this theory, some people argue that the plane might not have sunk at all. The basis for this idea comes from reports by several relatives of the passengers who claim to have heard ringing tones coming from their loved one's phones for up to four days after the supposed crash. Remarkably, 19 families have shared such experiences, shedding light on this intriguing phenomenon. One particularly poignant example that captured attention was a family member demonstrating on Chinese television that he could still call his deceased brother's phone, and it would ring. This emotional display added weight to the ringtone theory. A telecommunications expert named Paul Franks has thrown his support behind this theory, strongly believing that if the plane had indeed crashed into the ocean, the phones wouldn't have continued to function and ring for such an extended period. Franks shared his views on Reddit, highlighting that when a phone is submerged, especially in seawater, its survival and functionality are highly unlikely. Even if somehow it managed to survive, it wouldn't receive signals from the ocean's depths, further raising doubts about the plane's alleged crash. Could the ringing tones reported by the families truly be signals from the missing plane? If the plane didn't crash into the sea, where could it be now? And what other factors could explain the ringing phone phenomenon? With all this compelling evidence, one might wonder whether the original conclusion about the plane's fate needs re-evaluation. Let's know what you think about what you just saw on screen. Number 5. The Trail of Breadcrumbs A creative entrepreneur hailing from Roanoke, Virginia, Victor Ianello has gained significant recognition as a prominent member of an independent group. He's been delving deeply into simulated flights, focusing his efforts on the flight of Malaysian Airlines MH370, a matter that somehow escaped the attention of Malaysian investigators. What has captured Ionello's attention is the way Zahari, the pilot, handled MH370's path on the simulator. Rather than treating it as a continuous flight, Zahari chose to move the flight forward in stages, manually adjusting fuel and making jumps until the aircraft mysteriously disappeared from the simulation. This peculiar behavior has led Ianello to firmly believe that Zahari holds a key role in the chain of events that unfolded. It's important to underline that there were no technical requirements for Zahari to employ a consumer-grade Microsoft game-like simulator for this purpose. This has raised suspicions for Ianello, leading him to propose a unique hypothesis. The simulator flight might have served as Zahari's unconventional way of bidding farewell, akin to leaving a trail of breadcrumbs behind. While the exact motivation behind Zahari's actions remains a puzzle without further insights, Ianello stresses that dismissing the simulator flight as a mere coincidence would be unwise. According to Ianello's perspective, this unconventional simulator flight holds substantial importance in unraveling the complex narrative surrounding MH370's enigmatic disappearance. 
In essence, it opens a window into Zahari's potential state of mind and his involvement in the sequence of events that led to this puzzling incident. Number 4. The Cyber Conspiracy Esteemed historian Norman Davis puts forth another closely related idea on this matter. He suggests that the flight could have been hacked remotely and redirected to a hidden location. According to Davis, cyber experts might have exploited technology meant to prevent a recurrence of the 9-11 terror attacks. This technology enabled planes to be controlled from the ground. The specific technology he mentions is the Boeing Honeywell Uninterruptible Autopilot, as detailed in his book, Beneath Another Sky, A Global Journey into History. The existence of this technology opens up the possibility of a chilling scenario. Davis believes the plane could have been carrying sensitive materials or personnel headed for Beijing, making it a target for not just one, but two kidnapping attempts. Since conclusive answers have yet to be provided, Davis deems it reasonable to engage in speculation on the matter. According to Davis, the sequence of events might have involved the plane initially being remotely kidnapped by a hacker who intended to divert it to the U.S. naval base in Diego Garcia, located in the Indian Ocean. Subsequently, another hacker or remote controller may have taken over the plane to prevent it from reaching its intended destination. Number 3. The Elusive MH370 Jungle Crash Site H. In September 2019, when investigators were searching for the missing MH370 aeroplane, a British video producer named Ian Wilson had a unique idea. He believed that the plane might have crashed in a distant jungle, making it difficult to locate. Using satellite maps, Ian focused on rainforests in Southeast Asia and came across something that resembled an aeroplane deep in the Cambodian jungle, approximately 60 miles west of Phnom Penh. The images displayed the plane appearing to be wedged against a mountain at an angle. Despite some aeroplane parts from MH370 being discovered in the Indian Ocean, only a few were confirmed to belong to the missing aircraft. As a result, doubts persisted about the theory of an ocean crash. Undeterred, Ian, along with his brother Jackie, decided to venture into the jungle and explore their discovery. However, their journey was not without challenges, and their guides were forced to turn back due to treacherous terrain. Nonetheless, the brothers remained steadfast in their belief about the finding. Aviation expert Lieutenant Tim McMillan observed that the object indeed resembled an aeroplane, but it appeared too small to be a Boeing 777, which was the model of MH370. Ultimately, experts verified that the wreckage was not from MH370, but belonged to a different plane altogether. Despite this setback, Ian and Jackie maintained their faith in their discovery and hope to try again when they have sufficient funds for further exploration. Number 2. Hidden Passenger and Mysterious Cargo Amidst the investigations, another intriguing notion suggests a passenger may have hijacked the aircraft, slipping on board unnoticed. This enigmatic concept gained traction as investigators delved into the flight's vanishing act. Their scrutiny revealed a puzzling addition to the flight list, a mysterious cargo weighing 14 stone, equivalent to a hefty 196 pounds. Mr. Jaslin, who held a personal stake with his wife and children on board, disclosed that French investigators divulged this startling cargo revelation in a comprehensive report encompassing passengers and their belongings. Adding another layer to the puzzle, Mr. Waterloo, who aligns with the belief of intentional tampering, cited the French newspaper La Parisienne's disclosure of an overloaded container on the flight. Yet the reasons behind this perplexing occurrence remain shrouded in ambiguity. Further unraveling the mystery, it came to light that an unattributed load of 89 kilograms was surreptitiously incorporated into the flight list post-takeoff. Notably, the container, for reasons unclear, experienced an excess load beyond permissible limits. The motives behind these actions, whether resulting from incompetence or manipulation, continue to elude us, casting a veil of uncertainty over the situation. As inquiries proceed, Malaysians will inevitably confront these baffling questions. Aviation security expert Tim Termini lends weight to the notion of a hijacking, asserting that considerable support underscores this possibility. Within this framework, four conceivable scenarios emerge. 
The hijacking could have been orchestrated by a crew member, a passenger, an uncommon stowaway, or even the remote takeover of the aircraft's electrical systems. However, Philippa Baum, a notable figure in aviation security, struck a chord of caution. She emphasized the reluctance of officials to entertain the notion of a stowaway. Number 1. Rogue Missiles or Miscommunication Another line of thought proposes the possibility of it being shot down during a joint military training exercise between Thailand and the U.S. in the South China Sea, which coincided with the plane's disappearance. The idea is that miscommunication, technical issues, or human error might have caused this unfortunate event. A former French airline director, Marc Tegain, claimed he saw satellite images of unidentified aircraft in the region during the time of My 370's vanishing act. He also reported receiving threats, urging him to abandon this theory, indicating a potential case of mistaken identity. Another scenario speculates that MH370 was unintentionally targeted by a country's military, thinking it was a hostile or suspicious aircraft. This confusion could have arisen due to the plane deviating from its intended path, losing communication or resembling another aircraft. Nigel Cawthorn, a British author, even suggested that U.S. Thai fighters might have taken down MH370, fearing it was heading towards their military base in Diego Garcia Island, Indian Ocean. Cawthorn also pondered whether sensitive cargo or personnel on board attracted unwarranted attention or hostility. More elaborate conspiracy theories even propose that MH370's downfall was part of a cover-up operation, orchestrated by a state actor for political or strategic motives. This elaborate plan might involve creating a diversion, blaming another country, or clandestinely acquiring valuable items from the aircraft. G. Selena Waterloo, a French relative of one of the passengers, claimed that the U.S. Air Force shot down MH370 to confiscate electronic equipment destined for China, and a global cover-up was staged to conceal the truth. However, these theories face numerous challenges and criticisms. Solid evidence and clear motives for a shootdown are lacking, making it hard to substantiate these claims. No concrete proof of any missile or fighter jet near MH370 or any state actor's intention to shoot it down has emerged. The alleged satellite images and anonymous threats have not been validated by official sources. Furthermore, orchestrating the shooting of a civilian plane and then concealing it would require significant coordination and authorization and entail severe legal consequences. Maintaining such a massive conspiracy without any leaks or whistleblowers is highly implausible. Consequently, the veracity of these theories remains uncertain. Which theory about Malaysia flight MH370's disappearance do you find most plausible? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.